Our next section is section 3.4, Applications of Quadratic Functions. Applications for any of these things in math, these are our story problems. Some of the story problems, they actually give you the equations that they want you to work with. Others, you have to come up with the equations on your own. There is no new content for this assignment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do your recommended problems, which are one, two, and three, and then um, talk about, in general, other things you would need to be looking at. You're still re required to do the other problems, four, five, and six, that are listed for your homework. Um, I'm going to start with problem one. Problem one says the height of an object thrown vertically upward at a 48 feet per second has an equation h of t equals 48t minus 16t squared. Okay, where h is in feet and t is in seconds. A, how high will the rock be when t is 1.2 seconds? Okay, this is a problem that I could ask my eighth graders. That means I just need to stick a 1.2 in for t for both of those t's. So it'd be 4.8 times 1.2 minus 16 times 1.2 squared. This is a calculator question. It says to round it to the nearest tenth of a foot. So make sure that you um, follow the directions and please make sure to use units. I'm going to do 4.8 times 1.2 minus 16 times 1.2 squared. Um, actually, it's not 4.8, it's 48. Sorry, I knew something looked wrong with my answer. So let's go back here and hit delete. 34.56, which is approximately 34.6 feet. Let me make sure that that says 48. Okay. I got a negative number, so I knew something was wrong when I put the 4.8 in there. Okay, B, when will the rock be at 32 feet? So my H of T is equal to 32 feet. So I'm going to get the equation 32 equals 48 minus 16t squared. And they tell you that, hey, I can do this by factoring. Okay, so let's do it by factoring. I'm going to move everything over to the right-hand side so I have a positive t squared. I have put my t there. I have a 16t squared minus 48t plus 32 equals 0. 16 goes into everything. I'm going to divide everything by 16. t squared minus 3t plus 2 equals 0. This is a straightforward factor. Two numbers that multiply to 2 that add to negative 3 are going to be t um, minus 2 and t minus 1. Uh, no, t Two numbers that multiply the two that add to negative three, yeah, equals zero. My time is equal to one and two. It says, when will the rock be at a height of 32 feet? You should be able to do this by factoring. You'll get two answers. Explain why this is physically. So at one second and two seconds, it'll be at 32 feet. Okay? It is thrown from the ground up in the air, and then it comes back down. So that's telling me is at one second, and at two seconds, I'm at the same height. And that's because, hey, it's going up, and then it's coming back down. So something to that effect. C, when will the height be 24 feet? They tell me to round this one to the nearest tenth of a second. The, uh... Move it down a little bit. I want to know when 24 equals 48t minus 16t squared. 
And again, because it's a quadratic, I need to move everything to one side. I'm going to move everything to the left again. I'm going to get 16t squared minus 48t plus 24 equals 0. Notice here, not everything's divisible by 16, but I see everything's divisible by 4. You can use the quadratic formula right now. But I'm going to divide everything by 4 just to make the numbers smaller in the quadratic formula. So I have 4t squared minus 12t plus 6 equals 0. Um, now I'm going to use the quadratic formula. I'm going to get t is plus, um, negative b, so that's going to be 12, plus or minus the square root of negative 12 squared minus 4 times 4 times 6, all over 2 times 4. I'm going to do 12 plus or minus all over 8. I'm going to do this part in the calculator. I'm going to do the square root of 12 squared minus 4 times 4 times 6. Let me uh, do that again. The square root of 12 squared minus 4 times 4 times 6. Um, that gives me 4 root 3. And I'm going to now put this into decimals. So t is approximately 12 plus 4 square root of 3 divided by 8. And double-headed arrow, 2.4. Then I'm going to do 12 minus 4 square root of 3. Then divided by 8. Then gives me uh, 0 0.6. And it's said to tenths, seconds. So use the quadratic formula anytime it's asking you for an approximate number there says, when does the rock hit the ground? Well, what is the height at the ground? Well, the height is zero. So for part D, paper here, I want to know when 48T minus 16T squared is equal to zero. I'm going to pull a 16T out of everything. That's going to leave me with 3 minus T. So I know t is 0 at 0 and at 3 seconds. So we're going to say 3 seconds because it started at the ground here and it hit the ground at 3 seconds. E, what is the domain of the function? Well, 0 to 3 seconds. It can't go negative in time. And it doesn't really matter what happens after three seconds when it hits the ground. F. What is the maximum height the rock reaches? And when does it reach that height? Well, F time is going to be 1.5 seconds. How do I know that? Well, it's a parabola with two x-intercepts. The vertex is halfway in between these two. The height, I'm going to put a 1.5 into both of those t's. That's a calculator question. 48 times 1.5 minus 16 is 1.5 squared, and I get 36 feet. For what time periods is the height less than 15 feet Round to the nearest hundredth of a second. So, G, I want to know when 48t minus 16t squared is less than 15. So, I'm going to move everything over to the, um, 
and move everything over to the right hand side to get a positive t squared. You're going to see why what's going to happen in a second. So I get zero is less than 16 t squared minus 48 t plus 15. I'm now going to flip both sides around. And if I'm flipping both sides around, I also have to flip this symbol. Now I'm going to use the quadratic formula. Okay, for what time periods is the height less than 15 feet? So what I'm going to do is I am going to do my two x-intercepts like we did before. And that's going to give me my two zeros. Okay, and then I'm going to do sine analysis in each of my three regions to see whether I'm positive or negative. But I need those zeros first. Okay. So quadratic formula. I'm going to do 48 plus or minus the square root of 48 squared. I don't have to put the negative 48 squared. Um, 48 squared is going to be fine because a negative times a negative is a positive. Minus 4 times 16 times 15 all over 2 times 16 is 32. So my two t's that I'm going to get are, let me put a fraction in the calculator, 48 plus the square root of 48 squared minus 4 times 16 times 15 all over 32. And I get 2.65. Okay, and then I'm going to go take that same equation and I'm going to change the sign in front of the square root symbol to a negative. And I get 0.35 seconds. So my two factors, um, so is t minus 0.35, so that would be a 0.35 here, and a 2.65 here, t minus 2.65, those are the two factors. We know it's zero here and here. It's positive to the right. And it's negative to the left. Of any numbers that I stick in there, and if I do sign analysis, I'm going to get positives, zeros, negatives, zeros, and positives. And I want to know when am I bigger than zero? When am I bigger than zero? Well, what's my smallest time? We got to remember that. That was at zero. My biggest time is at three. So my intervals are from zero to 0 0.35, round bracket there, unioned with 2.65 to three. Okay, now let's look at the original question. When is the height smaller than 15 feet? Upside down parabola, you're going to have from where it starts to the 15 feet and from the 15 feet until where it hits the ground, that makes sense. So um, very drawn out, but that's the type of problem that you need to be able to work your way through. So that was problem one, 14 minutes. Do problem two. In statistics, there is a situation where the expression x times 1 minus x is of interest on the interval from 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 1. What is the maximum value of that function? What is the max? Okay, well, let's think about this. I know that it's 0 when this is equal to zero, so it is zero at zero and one. 
That means the maximum is going to be halfway between 0 and 1, so at 1 half. I'm going to put a 1 half in for that x. That's going to give me 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 fourth. Explain how you know the value obtained is, in fact, a maximum and not a minimum. Well, let's take this and multiply it out. That's going to give me x minus x squared. And I have a negative x squared. Therefore, it's upside down. Okay, that one took about a minute. So first one took 14. That one took a minute. Question three. Um, if you're taking a physics class or going to take a physics class, you're going to see something um, where some of the formulas that you've been dealing with come into play. So it says to use the quadratic formula to solve S equals the initial height plus the initial velocity times time minus one-half gravitation times time squared. Okay. It says to solve this for um, using the quadratic formula. So to solve something, we're going to make what we're solving for a zero. I'm going to move everything over to the other side just to get to turn that number positive. So that's going to give me g over 2, e squared, minus initial velocity times time, minus initial height. Okay. Um, now... I have it written in the order where this is my A, this is my B, this is my C. So I get negative B, B sub zero, plus or minus the square root of my initial velocity squared, minus four times G over two, that's my A, times negative s sub zero all over 2a which would just be g i get my initial velocity plus or minus the square root my initial velocity squared or what's well, negative times a negative is a positive four divided by two is a two so that would be 2g initial height over G. Um, you deal with physics, you may they may give you just directly a formula that looks um, like that instead of having you rearrange and solving to find missing pieces. So let me look through some of the test possible test questions here. Um, see if there's anything different. Nothing really different there, but I'm going to go back and I'm going, the first example they did, um, I want to make sure that you look at it um, so that when you do homework problem number six, you actually know what's going on there. I don't, I don't really want to write it out for you because that's the part that I'm testing you on um, is can you come up with the equation on your own? But for problem number six, you are going to want to look at example 2.5b where they drew out um, a rectangle field with two compartments where this distance was x. Um, he has 2,400 feet of fence. You need to be able to turn that into an equation. And remember, hey, length times width is an area. So 
you're doing something to deal with area. So that should get you through 3.4.